Hi everybody, this is Charlize the Nocti Girl here to talk about fun and unique camera related products you might not know about. I am excited to share with you today a new camera I recently added to my arsenal, the Fujifilm TX1. For all the film shooters out there, you are in for a real treat. This is such a special camera. I've been having so much fun with it since I got it from Japan and I just can't wait to go on more trips with it. What's the Fujifilm TX1 you ask? It is a panoramic rangefinder film camera that allows you to shoot in both panoramic and regular 35mm mode. It's especially unique because it actually allows you to switch between the two modes anytime you want. Meaning, in the same roll of 35mm film that it takes, you can shoot two shots in panoramic mode, switch to 35mm mode and take a few more shots, then switch back to panoramic mode after that. How cool is that? Now, some of you might be thinking, hmm, that looks and sounds suspiciously like the Hasselblad X-Fan. Well, that's because it is the same camera. Apparently, back in 1998, Fujifilm and Hasselblad did a collaboration on this camera and branded it as the X-Pan in the European and American market. While both models are essentially the same, it has been said that the titanium finish on the TX1 is more durable as the X-Pan had a common paint chipping issue even from just slight usage. With that said, it is probably easier to find a TX1 in mint condition than an X-Pan. I just love how sturdy and solid this camera feels in my hands. The titanium finish also makes it more scratch resistant. Also, the whip grip matches the champagne color body beautifully. I confess, this is the main reason why I chose the TX1 over the X-Pan, though some models do come with a black leather red grip instead of the wooden grip that you see here. On the front of the camera, you'll see the ISO selector switch. You can set it to DX mode or override it and change it to any other ISO settings you want. On the top of the camera, you'll see a hot shoe, the shutter speed dial, and the power switch. The A on the shutter speed dial means automatic, as the camera allows you to shoot in aperture priority mode. On the power switch, you'll see exposure compensation for two stops, as well as film advanced settings for single, continuous, and a 10 second self timer. The LCD here will show you how many frames are left on your roll. The back of the camera has a nice, soft rubber cover with a slight protrusion here for thumb support to give you a better grip and handling on the camera. The diopter is removable, so you can slide it up and swap it out for another one if you like. Then we have this switch here that allows you to switch between panoramic and 35mm mode, and you can actually see the frame lines change in the viewfinder. When the P is shown, it means you're in pano mode. On the LCD here, you can also see that the P appears when you're in pano mode. Going down the back side of the camera, you can see a small window on the left side that shows you what kind of film you have loaded in the camera. The LCD window shows you your ISO setting and battery level. There is an AEB or automatic exposure bracketing button, a display illumination button, and the force film rewind button. On the bottom of the camera, there's a standard thread mount for tripods in a battery compartment that holds two CR2 batteries. Now let's talk about image sizes as I'm sure that's probably the primary reason why you're watching this video. As mentioned previously, the camera takes 35mm film and it allows you to capture images in two size formats, the regular 24x36mm and the panoramic 24x65mm. And when you shoot in panoramic mode, you can get about 21 exposures on the 36 exposure roll film with 13 exposures on the 24 exposure roll. A unique thing about this camera is that when you load a roll film in there, the film is actually completely unloaded from the canister to the spool on the other side, then fed back into the canister as you shoot through the film. This is due to the ability of switching formats mid-roll as the formats are in different lengths. Makes sense, right? With that said, your exposure counter actually counts downward indicating the number of frames remaining. And when you switch formats, the counter also updates. 
When I first got this camera, I thought shooting in panoramic would be easy as I naively thought it just meant I got to fit more stuff in the frame. But oh boy was I wrong. It definitely challenged how I compose each shot and to really think about what to include and not include in the frame. Just because the shots are in a wider format doesn't automatically make them seem cinematic. Also, I realized that I had to pay attention to all the lines in the frame as a slightly crooked line could throw off the balance of the entire image. It is especially difficult for me to shoot panoramic in the portrait orientation as you really need to pay attention to what's on the top and bottom of the frame. If you don't have anything there, the negative space becomes very prominent because the frame is longer. And if you do fill the top and bottom of the frame with stuff, they could either make or break the shot. If you're considering and picking one up for yourself, keep in mind that there are only three lenses made for this camera and they're all compatible with the Hasselblad X-Pan version. The common ones are the 45mm f4 and the 90mm f4. The 30mm f5.6 is quite rare and very expensive and you will also need an external viewfinder to use it with. But hey, if you don't mind the money and the trouble, go for it! Now here are some shots I've taken with this camera so far. And I just can't wait to create more panoramic magic with it. Alrighty, you've been knocked up today and I'm really knocked out. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!